times when they go through the routes, they can't find the bottom of the basket. And then defensively, they've got to step it up. They've got to be able to play their defensive game, move their feet, and stay out of foul trouble. Underway here in Boone. Is App State and Louisiana going at it? Top of the key for App State. Here's Delft, top of the key. Takes it to the rim. Looking to go glass, and he's able to bank it in. And App State is, is on the board first. Our partner, some of the Mountaineers have never had trouble with. That's putting the ball in the basket. Adrian Delft, the freshman, is aggressive early. And Gant going right at the rim, and good defense there for App to start. Is back to the way comes Forrest for App State. Forrest has the top of the key. Justin Forrest averaging just shy of 16 points a game as they look to feed it inside. And that is an inside look just barely missed by Seacat, but it's Adrian Delph who comes up with another bucket. Give the credit to the big cat, Hunter Seacat, who misses the bunny but has the presence of mind to tap it out to his buddy who knows exactly what to do with it. And Louisiana looking to get it inside and stripped away there from Gant. Gant had, again, mentioned in the pregame, but 45 points earlier this year. This is definitely a player that a lot of scouts are looking at and, and coming to a lot of his games to see what he has to offer. So young man is averaging just under 30 points per game in Sunbelt play. And Louisiana off to a slow shooting start. 0 for 2 from the field back the other way come the Mountaineers. Here's a three-point look from... Force that's off the mark and back the other way come the Rage and Cajuns. So far, not a bad start for App State on the defensive end. They're making Louisiana work for their shots. They're doing a great job of getting back in transition. That's the key here. And just like that, it's seven to nothing. App State as Ron Shad Shabazz spots up and hits from deep. We talked a lot about Keenan Gant, but Ron Shad Shabazz is a bad man and he elevates and rises from behind the arc to put the mountaineers upset so far louisiana struggling against this app state defense forrest looking inside for seacat and the turnover on the other end by louisiana app state in their most previous their win over little rock forced 21 turnovers perhaps something that this defense is looking to be opportunistic today against louisiana gonna be the key today because this is a louisiana team that does a pretty good job of forcing turnovers themselves forcing over 16 per one all season long i fully expect that to be the case it's app state looking to get it in they get it into seacat who finds Shabazz. Isaac Johnson, leading rebounder in the Sudmelt Conference, has it top of the key as he's not sure where to go with it. Spins inside and has it blocked. Gets it right back with five to shoot. But Seacat is there to put it back in. It's going to be the key all night long. Who can win the battle of the boards, especially offensive rebounds? As you see right here, going to be a turnover. Right here on Marcus Stroman, shuffles the feet. But look at the class work right here. Isaac Johnson, Hunter Seacat, the two bigs for Appalachian State. They clearly have the advantage on the inside. Naturally playing a smaller lineup. But I'll tell you what, the Mountaineers have done a job so far. Nine. Nine to zero. App State is on top. And again, this App State team, not the conference start they wanted as they find Seacat inside again, and Hunter Seacat once again able to convert. And we talked about with the size advantage of the App State Mountaineers. Once the entry pass goes into the painted area, the rotation comes from a guard or a forward with guards. He's not turned over by the Mountaineers. And back the other way to lay it in is Justin Forrest and Pierre. I mean, it's a good start for App State, but 13-0, to did you expect this? Not at all. Now, this is a Mountaineers team that plays very well at home, but again, this is a, a Raging Cajuns team that can fill it up themselves. So far, Louisiana is ice cold from the field. They cannot buy a bucket. 0 for 3. Here's a 3 by App State back the other way, looking to keep the run going, and got a loose ball foul against Seacat there. App State already with a 7-1 to one rebounding advantage. And they have done a job on the glass. Again, it's going to be the key. 
who can get the second, third chance opportunities and then take them away on the other side of the basketball. We've already seen the Mountaineers get six or seven points just from second chance opportunities. And it's one and done for the most part for Louisiana. Louisiana, it's Gant who has it. They feed it inside. Now here's an open look for three, and that's no good. That was Jerikas Davis missing on the three, and back the other way comes Shabazz. Shabazz inside, spinning to the rim, goes up. I think he wanted a little contact there as well. What a Ron shot, Shabazz the lefty, goes with the spin and up and in with the right. His off English to put it in. Justin Miller's shot rims out. And now Forrest pass intercepted. And now a three. Louisiana still held out. My goodness, Louisiana 0 for 6. Certainly not the start they were hoping for. As back the other way comes Shabazz handling the point for App State. And it's in a variety of ways they're missing point blank shots. They're missing from the mid-range area, from behind the arc. Just got to get settled down. But the Mountaineers doing a great job of taking advantage. Like right there with Ron Shad Shabazz again. Up and F, up and in with the left. App State certainly coming out on fire and just showing great effort defensively as well as miscommunication. Almost a steal, though, by App State, but Louisiana able to stay on top of it. Here's Russell attacking, and finally Louisiana able to get on the board. And that's one of those deals right there that's a confident booster. Now you see the ball go through the net as a team. You hope that that jump starts your offense. Seacat hands it off to Shabazz, and he's a little short, but an offensive rebound by Isaac Johnson. Here's a three-pointer, and it's not good as Russell pulls it down but it's another second chance opportunities for the Mountaineers they've got the league's leading rebounder and I Johnson he just continues to do a great job tonight Miller banging his way inside and comes up short on the jump hook very physical play on the inside right there you see Isaac Johnson grimacing just a bit up the floor but does a great job right there of being physical and standing his ground in the post Justin Forrest off a pick pull up jumper contested and Seacat and like you said here, every and even though they didn't get it that time, that'll bring us time. That'll bring us the media timeout. But every single offensive rebound, that's more than Louisiana has in the entire rebound category. As the Mountaineers inbounding, you have Michael Bibby into the game now for Appalachian State, as well as Bennett Holly. Bennett Holly, a guy who matched his career high his last time out, scoring 12 helping the Mountaineers get their first Sun Belt Conference win, and on the road, no less, their first road win of the season as well. Yeah, that was big, and the last two games, Hawley has been averaging more minutes. He's got nearly 30 minutes a game, two straight. What do they like about him lately? They've been playing him the last couple games especially. He's a guy that stretches the floor, has the range to be able to go behind the arc and make the bigs in the conference get out and work on him. Shabazz has it top. Now they swing it around. Here's Tyrell Johnson. Now here's Bibby into the lane. Bibby, the runner, it's good. Michael Bibby just doing a tremendous job of coming off the ball screen, getting right to his spot on the floor. No hesitation, elevation up and in over the defender. And now Miller traveling and just, I can't imagine that Bob Marlin is thrilled about how this is going so far because not only is, is his team missing really good looks, they've had some open looks, but the, the turnovers. Absolutely, as you see Mike. Bibby right there, get into the lane, elevate, go up and in. But let's give credit to the Mountaineers. This is a team, again, got their first conference win their last time out. See a foul right here on the floor going against Louisiana. Kind of slow to get up there. It's Trajan Wesley. Foul call going to be on him. But, again, be a flagrant here. As you said, didn't look like it was – forceful Kanto. It didn't look like Michael Bibby did it on purpose. Just kind of swimming, trying to get around his defender. But the contact did look like it occurred. And I see a little bit of applause coming out of the Louisiana huddle. So I... On Trajan Wesley, they're on the play. But then a flagrant foul on Michael Bibby for the contact to the head. I think the referees took their time, did a good job getting this one right, making sure that calls like that don't affect the outcome of this game. Absolutely. 
as Wesley able to knock in him. Absolutely, as you see Mike Bibby right there, get into the lane, elevate, go up and in. But let's give credit to the Mountaineers. This is a team, again, got their first conference win their last time out. See a foul. A little bit of applause coming out of the Louisiana huddle. So I On Trajan Wesley, they're on the play, but then a flagrant foul on Michael Bibby for the contact to the head. I think the referees took their time, did a good job getting this one right, making sure that calls like that don't affect the outcome in this game. Absolutely. As Wesley able to knock in both free throws. Trajan Wesley, 5'9", freshman guard from Navasota, Texas. So now, a couple of free throws and Louisiana gets the ball back. So really the only disadvantage in that situation for the Raging Cages is Wesley now has a personal, but everything else because of the flagrant, the two shots, and you got the ball, but then Louisiana turns it right back over. Shabazz running the break, finds Bibby. Now here's a three-pointer by Holly. Partner, you asked what Bennett Holly brings to the table. That right there, he's a sniper from behind the arc. Knocks down another one here. And as you mentioned, had a career high, tightest career high with 12 against Little Rock. And Louisiana, a long range jump shot and back the other way. Here's O'Shawn Williams. And the tip back dunk. This beautiful basketball right here by the Mountaineers. The ball movement on the break, being unselfish. First of all, getting a free look from behind the arc. And then Tyrell Johnson, the physical Freak gets to the rim and throws it down. He for threw the a spike down there. They have a whistle down low. Tyrell Johnson looking to play defense. See the replay. You see Tyrell Johnson locates the ball from way behind the arc, and then the athleticism just takes over from there. Somebody give him a Sports Center top ten nomination. Let's let's look for that. Let's. Post the hashtag and the Sports Center will pick it up, right? Absolutely. That's what I'm looking for. Heck of a play right there by Johnson. Here's Gant taking it inside. And for Gant, that is his first field goal. Took nearly eight minutes for the second leading scorer in this conference to get a bucket. And he has got to get going for the Raging Cajuns to get back in this game. But that's what he does. He, he takes a big outside the arc. Got to respect the fact that he can shoot. Drives to the basket as Tyrell Johnson with the answer on the opposite end. Looks like he took that drive to the basket by Gant a little personal. And you mentioned when we were talking before pregame that Tyrell Johnson was going to be key. And once again, like you said, it's it's turning out that way. He is the cog that makes this wheel really run. If he can get it going and be that fourth scorer, the Mountaineers are tough to stop. As Justin Miller able to get inside, and the junior forward from Beaverdam, Kentucky, puts it home. That's a nice move by Miller, getting in the post, getting to his position, and then putting the ball up and in, stopping the bleeding here for the Cajuns. The snowball just started to roll in here. No pun intended with all the snow on the ground, but the Mountaineers have come out hot, and they've done it on both ends of the floor. As the inside take by Miller almost lost it, but Gant is there, comes up with it, and an easy bucket there for Jakeen and Gant. That's what you got to do. You got to get your best player in positions to where he can start to feel it, start to see the ball go through the basket, and get some confidence himself. Swing it around. Here's Williams. Feeds it inside to Tyrell Johnson, who goes up and is hacked across the arms. And looks like we may have shots here. And it's just so much size on the inside for the Mountaineers. They just continue to take advantage there. They've had some opportunities from the outside, but it's because they have that size advantage on the inside. As you see Tyrell Johnson taking advantage, draws the foul, and now has a chance to go to the line and get a couple of easy ones. Johnson on the season, a 76% free throw shooter. And App State as a team, 73%, fifth in the Sun Belt Conference as Johnson hits the first. Right now, App State shooting 57%, sizzling percentage from the field. And most of it has come from the painted area. Their fast break points, their second chance points, doing a tremendous job on the offensive glass, giving themselves those second, third chance opportunities. Sap stay with a 29 to 10 lead. And now Tyrell Johnson will come out and into the game will come Isaac Johnson for App State. Tyrell Johnson, some solid minutes as he heads to the bench. Absolutely. Giving this team the joke that they needed, especially with that putback there early on. 
And now a steal by O'Shawn Williams as he runs back the other way. Very smart by O'Shawn Williams pulling it out, understanding that the numbers game was not with him there. And here's Forrest. App State will just set things up. Ten and a half to go here in the first half. And now you see the Cajuns look, changing up that look defensively, the little matchup zone. Now Bibby off the mark on the three, and Louisiana sprinting back the other way, and an offensive foul as O'Shawn Williams steps up. What a tremendous job by O'Shawn Williams, anticipating the move by Marcus Stroman there, who's tremendous in the open court, but Williams just does a great job of anticipating and then moving his feet, beating Williams to the point, or Stroman to the point of attack, picking up that charge call feels like App State is just a step ahead of what Louisiana is doing right now and you just almost felt that Stroman was trying hey let's get two or three points back quickly here because they're down 19 I mean you can't not be filling the deficit a little bit here if you're the Raging Cajuns. The Cajuns trying to get into their game they want to run they want to get up and down the court put points on the board just hadn't been able to get on track so far today. Isaac Johnson is fouled in the act of shooting by Miller and so that's going to be two more shots for App State. And right now, Bob Marlin is looking for answers. Hadn't been able to slow down this Mountaineers team, so you move from the man to the matchup zone, and then we have the chance to get a little full-court pressure, try to slow him down in the offense. But the Mountaineers just doing a tremendous job of being able to have ball movement, take advantage of their matchup problems, and get to the line for another chance at an easy two. Johnson making the first and the second. This, and this App State team, as we've mentioned, They've been so close to putting it together. So many close losses. The 1-6 and six record is so deceiving for this team. And in my humble opinion, it's just been that road loss as you see the saucy move to the basket <laughs> for the raging Cajuns right there. Cedric Russell getting to the cup. But that win on the road for the Mountaineers, you can just see that confidence build in them. And they're playing like a team that's 6-1 and one as opposed to 1-6 and six in the conference. Forrest, top of the key, is it's a two-man game between him and Williams now Forrest able to get it's an inside to Isaac Johnson who went up trying to slam it home and was looking for contact didn't get the call and now a three by Gant and a little bit of momentum for Louisiana as Gant is beginning to heat up he's got seven and that's why it's important to get your leading player some easy looks because once he sees that ball go through the basket a couple of times that confidence starts to build, and that's when that shot becomes more and more pure from behind the arc. O'Shawn Williams, top of the key. Now he finds Bennett Hawley, one dribble, gets the defender up in the air, couldn't get it to fall. And Gant with the rebound, and Louisiana looking to trim a little bit off this deficit here as they bring it up. Russell, tough shot from 15, but he's got it to fall. Cedric Russell coming down, trying to give this team a boost. A sophomore out of Alexandria, Louisiana, doing a great job of getting to the cup the first time, and then that time understanding they're expecting drive and just pulling up for the mid-range jumper. Here's Forrest. He's going to take a deep look, and he's got it. When you're feeling it, you're feeling it, and as a team right now, App State, is doing just that, Justin Forrest from King Street. Gant, heat check, couldn't get it that time, and now App State going to try and run. App State's been good. Nope, they'll slow it down. They, they have been good when they're able to run. Absolutely, and transition has been their strength tonight. As you see them getting back defensively and then outrunning the Cajuns on the offensive side of the floor. Sean Williams, they just swing it around. App State being very patient right now with nine seconds to shoot. And now another foul call. Shot will be a non-shooting foul. That should bring us to the media timeout with App State. Four, four of ten from three-point range. They continue to light it up as you have a three here from come out. They've knocked down shots now, eliminating the need to get those second-chance opportunities because they continue to get destroyed on the glass by the Mountaineers, which is really the difference in this ballgame. There's several players back in the game. Ron Chad, Shabazz, Adrian, Delph. And Seacat all back in for App State as Shabazz finding the open forest on the penetrate and kick. It's a little strong, but Hunter Seacat is there to tip it out. Now here's Delph with a triple. That's a little strong. And the rebound by Stroman. 
Now Miller getting Seekhead up in the air. They find Gant inside. Offensive foul. Second time today, App State has stepped up and taken a charge. They have done just a tremendous job, have the Mountaineers, on the offensive side of the basketball. Again, this is a Louisiana team that's in the top tier of the conference in scoring. They come over scoring well over 80 points per game. The Mountaineers have just stepped up today on the defensive end. I know I'd be curious what their game plan was coming in because you're right, Louisiana averaging 84 points a game in conference play and right now just 17. Obviously plenty of time to go as the pass intercepted by Gant. But Forrest is there to tip it. Forrest pull up from 15. Got it. Fantastic play by Justin Forrest. Not giving up on the play on the turnover. Does a great job of tipping the pass himself. And then what's the first rule in basketball, Mr. Purvis? Stop the basketball. Cages don't do it there. And Justin Forrest takes advantage. Forrest with a beautiful hit on that one. Now here's a three by Louisiana, and that is good. That is Jeremy Hayes knocking it down. This Louisiana team can fill it up on the offensive end. Jeremy Hayes getting a much-needed basket for the Cape. Seacat, the jump hook a little strong, and Gant pulls down the rebound. Gant can really fill it up in multiple categories for Louisiana. He tries a three, and that's well off the mark. Gant averages three blocks a game, eight rebounds, and over 20 points. The only player apparently, according to the Sunbelt Conference in the nation, with those numbers. Tremendous, tremendous numbers for Mr. Gant. He is attracting so much attention from these pro scouts. They see the potential. They see what he can do. As you see the tray ball right there from Jeremy Hayes. Beautiful elevation and follow through to knock it home for the Cajuns. What is it that attracts so many pro scouts to Gant? I mean, it might it might seem obvious to some, but is it just the, the ability to play inside and out? It's the athleticism. As you said, when you can play multiple positions, when you can give so many different looks on the offensive end, go to the cup, when you can shoot the three ball, get the mid-range game going, you are an asset to any professional team. That time, O'Shawn Williams with the air ball and back the other way comes Louisiana as Stroman works with it. Sticking on Gant is not just on the offensive end. He does a tremendous job defensively as well, as you said, averaging three blocks. It's tough to get into the lane against this team and get easy buckets because he's always lurking. Hey, yeah, you just look at his frame, incredible wingspan. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a big, but he's, he's slim like a guard as well, but just can get up. Absolutely. 6'8", about 215 if you're being generous to him, but does just a tremendous job of using that athleticism and out athleting the fellow bigs in the Sun Belt Conference. O'Shawn Williams, the three no good. App State now four of 13 from three as they missed their last three from downtown. But still a big lead for the Mountaineers. The inside drive and a foul called, and that's going to be only the fourth total foul called on App State. It's a big-time move by Jarekis Davis. Does a tremendous job of just using that speed, using that athleticism, and not hesitating. Putting the ball on the floor, putting the pressure on the defense, makes the help come and draws the foul. It almost seems like that's been a, that hesitation that you talk about has been a little bit of the problem so far for Louisiana. Just have not known exactly what to do offensively. You just hadn't seen them be aggressive on the offensive end. It's been a lot of outside shots. You don't see a lot of working through the offense. They've got to do a better job of being aggressive, putting that pressure on the Mountaineers and not making it easy on them on the defensive end. Grant making the first. Or Davis, I mean. The junior forward from Jackson, Mississippi. Misses the second. And Shabazz with the rebound. And now you got a quick little trap here is Gets it ahead of Tyrell Johnson. Now numbers for the Mountaineers, but then Louisiana quickly back. Delph has a near side wing, scanning the floor. Now O'Shawn Williams, top of the key is App State. Finds Shabazz, an open look from three. It's no good. The inside rebound goes off of App State. And right now it seems Louisiana a little bit in that zone defense. App is getting some looks from three. They just aren't falling at the moment. Yeah, the matchup zone right now is being effective only because, as you said, the Mountaineers not able to knock down the outside shot as they were earlier in the period. Mountaineers just need to continue to work the basketball. As you see a great job right there on the offensive glass and in the painted area by Justin Miller. He gets big, goes up strong, and follows and finishes 
through the contact, getting his own rebound right there, just finishing strong. Yeah, Miller has been pounding inside all day, and he's missed some close ones, but again, he just continues to fight hard inside, and that time the offensive rebound, something Louisiana has not gotten a lot of in this game. And Miller young, able to make good on it. The young man, Justin Miller, is what we like to call a partner, a load. He goes right at 6'6", 250, and it's tough to handle in the painted area. Absolutely. As Miller now will head out and into the game for the first time, Christian Lafayette for Louisiana. And you see the Raging Cajuns changing up the defensive look again, trying to slow down this App State offense, take away time on the shot clock for them to run through the progression of their offense. Run shot, Shabazz top of the key. They swing it around. Delf, the head fake, trying to get inside. Goes up, and that's what App State, you know, take it inside, penetrate that zone a little. It's a fantastic move by Adrian Delf. First of all, the ball movement was terrific. And then Delf with the little up fake and then goes baseline. And then what was smart, when he elevated, didn't go into the defender, but went around him. Great body control to avoid the foul call. Lafayette is tied up on the floor. The ball will stay with Louis. They have to get with Louis. They have to work for everything. And then the battle of the boards just dominated right now by the Mountaineers. And it's led to them being up so far by 14. Here's Russell working with it, top of the key. Now a deep three. That was a tough shot, and it's good by P.J. Hardy. And a desperation shot by Hardy with two seconds left on the shot clock. He just elevates and puts it up and in. That's a big-time basket for this Cajuns team. Louisiana down by as many as 20, 24-4 to four earlier in this first half. And they have gotten it down to 11, and Shabazz can't quite connect there. But the offensive rebound put it back up and in for Isaac Johnson. It's been a difference all night long. The second, the third chance opportunities. Mountaineers doing work on the glass now Cedric Russell looking to add another three and a little short that time back the other way comes Ron Shad Shabazz who averaging just shy of 19 points a game sixth in the Sun Belt Conference gets it inside to Johnson almost lost it Bibby will spot up from distance and that is short but it comes to Oshan Williams who finds Tyrell Johnson. The triple is good for Tyrell. And that's why Tyrell Johnson is so lethal on the offensive end. We've seen him elevate and throw it down. We've seen him get rebounds. We've seen him do post moves. But they're stepping outside the arc and knocking down the tree ball. And how big has he been? Seven points, two of two from the field. He's hitting his open shots. He's been huge so far. And now we have a traveling violation. Just out of sync this Cajun team as you see the desperation three by Hardy up and in that's a big time basket for the Cajuns and then the ball movement to find the open Tyrell Johnson who's true from behind the arc and again that was a 50-50 ball and at, again you just, you've seen a lot of those balls so far today and you talk about the second chance points going to App State because it was anyone's possession but App State was able to get it and that led to the open three and the record is what it is but this is a Mountaineer team that plays tremendously well in the Holmes Convocation Center. And you're seeing why now. The ball just seems to, to bounce your way. And having that confidence from getting that first conference win is invaluable as Tyrell Johnson is working right now. Tyrell Johnson averages eight points a game. Well, he's already got nine. Huge, huge boost here in this first half for the Mountaineers. Is Hardy working with it for Louisiana App State back up to an 18 point lane. Gant has it picked away by Forrest. He goes coast to coast and puts it in. That's the second time today we've seen Justin Forrest come up with the steal and take it all the way to the basket. When he is on fire, this team is almost unstoppable. He's a streaky shooter, and once he starts putting that ball in the basket, they just have so many offensive options. They're tough to stop. And it's now a 9-0 run for App State Pierre as they are feeling it. And Gant gets inside and throws down the flush. And that's just great off the ball movement by Gant being able to come off that screen look, go right to the basket, and great look by Stoughton. Answering back, Tyrell Johnson says, hello, Convocation Center. It's a breakneck pace. They're not letting the cages rest on their laurels. As soon as the ball goes through the basket, they're up the floor, and they just do a tremendous job of finding an open teammate. 
Now Strowman gets the red carpet treatment from the App State defense that time. It's a tremendous move by Strowman, being able to put the ball on the floor, not letting the Mountaineers get an easy shot out of it. As you see, another great move right. Both of these teams averaging over 80 points per game. But on the opposite end of that, they really struggle, both of them. On the defensive end, the Mountaineers have done a, a tremendous job so far holding this Cajun team to 31 points. But the Cajuns continue to struggle. Louisiana also with 12 turnovers in this game, and a lot of that has been forced errors as Strowman looking to break down Johnson. His jumper just a little off the mark, and now here's five seconds and Shabazz up the floor. Shabazz rises up at the buzzer, and it is short. At cause, at causing turnovers and turning those into easy points. And then the raging cages. They just got to get down to basics. They got to take it one possession at a time, work the ball around, and then get more active on the glass. Forrest has it, gives it up top to Seacat. App State starting with the ball on offense here. Get it inside, Seacat, and that is too easy. The, the nice high-low action there. And when the Cajuns, what they do is play so small when you got Gant at the center trying to contain the big cat, Hunter Seacat, the size advantage is apparent and the Mountaineers take advantage there. It's that time the quick move to the rim by Miller. What? Miller maybe only 6'6", but showing the quickness there, he's got the size as well. well. That was a big time ball move right there by Justin Miller, getting to the basket, putting the move on Seacat. Now Seacat looking inside at Shabazz and threw it right to Stroman. Stroman sprinting the other way. Get it inside to Gant, and Gant with an easy reverse lay in that time. And that's what you got to do if you're the Cajuns. It starts with one possession. You get a basket, you come back, get a turnover, and chip into this lead. App State on top by 18, 53 to 35. As Seacat looking for the handoff, he got a little extra curricular there by P.J. Hardy as he was getting a little too physical with Justin Forrest. But you like to see the defensive intensity amplified right here by the Cajuns, they got to get back in this game, and it's going to start on this defensive end. Giving up 51 points in the first half, just way too many to be successful. Yeah, you're right on point there, absolutely. App State averaging 80 a game, but they were on pace for 100 and just was really able to play pace up with all the turnovers they were forcing. Here's Shabazz with a three. And that's what we talked about. Ron shots, Shabazz continues to do work, but it's on the defensive end for the Louisiana Raging Cages. You cannot leave possibly the best player on the floor wide open. He'll make you pay every time. And Shabazz in double figures now with 10. He's second App State player in double figures as Hardy with the bad pass feeding Shabazz who slams it down. Mountaineers continue to do the job on the defensive end. Great job right there by Isaac Johnson to realize that Shabazz had leaked up the court and then Shabazz showtime on the other end of the floor and another turnover. Isaac Johnson feeding Seacat with a flush. It's just defense turning into easy offense. The Mountaineers, Mountaineers making the lead from your leaders. You don't want to see them stay stagnant, but you want them to continue to get better and then make the players around them better. Ron Shah Shabazz has been doing a tremendous job of that all season long. I'm sure the time, the quick time out there by Louisiana Bob Marlin probably was not liking the way his team was once again, just being a little complacent with the basketball and turning it over as they get it inside to Gant. Absolutely not. And it started, as you see, another turnover by the Cajuns. It started pretty good for the Cajuns, but then just went downhill rather quickly with a great rejection right there by Gant. Gant showing why he leads the Sun Belt Conference in block shots, pinning that one to the backboard. And Shabazz just favoring that right arm a little bit as he comes back down the floor as you look at it again. That is some serious wingspan right there. Jakeen and Grant can do it all. He's very long at that 6'8". And you talk about his offensive prowess all you want to, but he is so tough to get a basket on in that painted area. Stroman finds Miller, who will tee up the three. That's no good. And a very solid rebound by Isaac Johnson, who leads the Sun Belt Conference in rebounds per game. Again, just one and done for the Cajuns on the offensive end. They have got to do a better job on the glass. Johnson going up, elevating, and was fouled. You could tell that he wanted to throw it down right there, but was fouled in the act. 
And that's just a great job, again, of the Mountaineers not letting the Cajuns rest. Once they get the rebound, they're out in transition. They're beating the Cajuns down the floor. And the Cajuns not in position to pick up their man on the other end. Almost seems like Louisiana is, is surprised by the way App State is defending them. Even that couple plays ago when Gant, the quick double team, came at him and he just kind of threw an over-the-top pass that was tipped. Well, the Mountaineers are understanding that Jakeen and Grant, Gant excuse me, is the only person on this team that's really doing damage. So what do you do? You get the ball out of his hands quickly by bringing the double team and not delaying. And then Gant able or forced to give it up, and that causes the quick turnover. Johnson hitting a pair of free throws, giving him eight points for the game. And App State now with a 26-point lead. As Louisiana, if they want to try and come back in this game, they have got to start putting some offense together here. Here's P.J. Hardy looking for the deep triple, and it's a tipped in by Gant. Almost looked like Johnson had a hand on that too, but I think it was Gant that guided it in. Tremendous job right there on both ends of the floor by both of these teams. Just the aggressiveness, just the physicality, just the athleticism to get up and down the court, breakneck pace. Now the rebound tipped, but it's Hunter Seacat who has it after the miss by Jerikas Davis as Isaiah Taylor brings it up. But misses, but Hunter Seacat, the offensive rebound, back to Taylor, and he is fouled. App State ahead, 64 to 37. There is a little of a little of confusion on the score. Position, they got Jakeenan Gant, who stands at 6'8", and that's all well and good in some cases. But for the Mountaineers, they have that size on the inside, and they have it at multiple positions. Jakeenan Gant is the tallest person on the floor for Louisiana at one time, and it hurts them when they face the size of the App State Mountaineers. Is Isaac Johnson knocking in a? pair of free throws Johnson now six of six at the free throw line and just just another way that App State is just overperforming today just going above and beyond Johnson normally a 60 percent free throw shooter on the season but six of six here today I think it's safe to say that this is the best that we've seen the App State Mountaineers play all year and give the credit to Jim Fox for getting his team ready and to play tonight hey. As Gant trying to go high to put that back in, but once again, Johnson right there for the carom. Johnson with 10 rebounds as well in the game, so he's got a double-double as Forrest takes it inside and is fouled. Looks like two shots coming for Forrest. App State has also been able to get to the free-throw line in this game, and they're 8 of 8 from there. It just seems that you know maybe you know starting conference play 0-6 and, and then finally, you know, Getting that win on the road at Arkansas. Little Rock, they had a couple of leads in that game. They almost let slip away, but finally won a close game. I mean, once you get that monkey off your back, you just are able to play so more, so much more free and clear. And you can see it everywhere. You see it on the bench. You can see it on the floor. It's in everybody's eyes. They have that confidence of knowing, hey, we've competed with everyone all year. Now that we finally got over that hump, it's our time. It's a couple of free throws hit by Justin Forrest. So App State will extend their lead to, I can hardly believe I'm saying it, but 30, 31-point lead here for App State. They have just extended this huge halftime lead that they had. It's just tremendous just watching the offensive problems as you see the stroke right there by Jerikas Davis. The Mountaineers just doing a tremendous job on both ends of the floor. It's great basketball. Forrest has it between the rings, comes off a high screen. Now Forrest will tee it up from distance, and he has got it. This Mountaineers team is feeling it in the matchup zone by the Cajuns, just leaving them susceptible to the outside shot. Justin Forrest pulls up that time from 321 to knock it in for three. <laughs> Practically a different area code there. <laughs> As Johnson pulls down his, uh, his 12th rebound, Forrest goes to the deck. There's a scramble for the ball, and... Calling a foul on Forrest. Great effort right there on both sides. Cajuns not deterred by the score. Still playing great, hard basketball. And that's what you want to see if you head coach Bob Marlin. How will your team respond to adversity? Will they lay down or will they continue to fight? It's a long season. This game not over, and then the season certainly not. Absolutely, as the inside take by Wesley. 
Can't get that to fall, and O'Shawn Williams comes back the other way. This is a Louisiana team that was picked second in the Sun Belt poll just behind Georgia State. Obviously, they're not quite there right now. It's a beautiful no-look pass from Johnson to Tyrell Johnson, Isaac Johnson to Tyrell Johnson, and he will shoot a pair of free throws. And you kind of you spotlighted before the game Tyrell Johnson was going to be critical to this game. What was it that made you think that? He's always the piece that if he's at it and it's been hypothesized about, it's been taken to the experiment table and proven to law, when Tyrell Johnson plays his best basketball, this team does not lose. And so if he comes in off that bench and he continues to do well and put the ball in the basket and play great defense with his physical ability, he's tough to stop, and he can take on your best offensive player. Johnson hitting one of two. He's got 15 in the game, had 14 first-half points off the bench and had that, obviously, that sick dunk that we showed uh, during halftime, the Sports Center top 10 nominee. Zap State leading by over 30 points. Here's P.J. Hardy looking to turn the corner. Finds Davis, who elevates and hits from 15. Davis is starting to feel it. He's starting to get to his spot on the floor. He's starting to have no hesitation, and is leading to a better offensive output here in the second half. Bibby feeds it inside Isaac Johnson, who looks to attack. They swing it around. Tyrell Johnson, three-pointer is no good, and Gant goes high for the rebound. And that time, Trajan Wesley looking for Gant and just was off the mark with the pass. Trying to find their best player, trying to get Gant involved in the offense. They know the offense needs to run through him. It's just one of those nights for not only him, but for all of the Cajuns where things just aren't clicking. Yeah, and for Gant, really, I mean, you look at their shooting percentage, Louisiana shooting 46%. It's not necessarily that they're shooting so poorly. I really just think that the 16 turnovers has massively hurt this team, and App State has benefited, been opportunistic, as Bibby takes it inside, could not convert with a little teardrop there, and Louisiana will rebound. As you pointed it out, it's the, the transition points, it's the easy points that really have separated the Mountaineers here. But not only that, but the shooting percentage for the Mountaineers is just off the charts. And it just it it helps your confidence when you are able to get those turnovers and get easy buckets. It just kind of lifts everything up. And when you get easy offense like that because of defense, then you start to, to get that confidence and feel it more on the offensive end. Then the basket becomes just a little bit bigger, and you can pull up from way outside the arc and knock it down, as we've seen the Mountaineers do a number of times tonight. Couldn't be more right as O'Shawn Williams squares up and cannot quite connect from three. Their app state as a team in this one, 7 of 20, 35% as we have a whistle down low. It looks like we're going to have a foul called, an offensive foul on Louisiana. That's going to be on Justin Miller. Going to get the big Justin Miller just for being just a wee bit too physical down low. Understood that he had the physical advantage down there with Bennett Holly trying to keep him out of the low post just a little too overzealous trying to get positioned and set up to get the entry pass there. It's just so interesting because again you look at the Sun Belt Conference and we looked at the standings at halftime. How condensed the teams are. How close teams are. You've had a lot of close games and even separated between first and seventh. There's only a game and a half separating you know, some of those teams that are in, you know tied for fifth, sixth and seventh place. And this App State team obviously showing they can compete with the teams at the top of the conference as well. You just never know what could happen if App State can play defense like this night in and night out and kind of get this, use this as a starting block for their momentum. Well, you said it right, Parton, is the convolutedness of this conference that continues to give each and every team in it a chance to have a higher seed in that Sun Belt Conference tournament. And that goes a long way when you're trying to punch your ticket to the dance. Absolutely, and that's what every team hopes for. Have a chance to make magic happen as Trajan Wesley will get set to inbound for Louisiana. Finds Jerikas Davis, who has been feeling it, and Davis showing it once again as Davis now has hit his first two shots here of the half and now hits a three, giving him eight points. He's got the high hand, and if you're the Raging Cajuns, the ball needs to go through number 11 every time down the floor offensively. Davis has shown that he can put up some big numbers, a career high of 27 points that he hit this season, and then just the nice form. 
it's not an easy basket to make over the supremely taller Tyrell Johnson. That's a big-time basket. Bennett Hawley feeds Johnson inside. Johnson going up, able to draw a foul, and has it fall as well. How about Tyrell Johnson? He showed the outside game. He showed the mid-range game. He's thrown it down, and now the back to the basket Finishing through the contact. What you're going to get from Justin Forrest. Isaac Johnson has been a staple this year. It's Tyrell Johnson. If he can continue to play great basketball, this team is so tough to compete with. He just has brings so much energy. And, again, that length, especially with the kind of defense as Johnson now, 18 points with that free throw. And Louisiana brings it up, facing a 31-point deficit here. Tyrell Johnson started out the year in the starting lineup. Jim Fox made some changes, brought him off the bench, and it really kick-started his game. And you see it coming to a head tonight. As right now, R.J. Gladney. That was, he threw that down with authority right there. Rises and finishes for the Cages. Big time play. Almost a turnover, and it is turned over. As back the other way comes Trajan Wesley. He feeds Jerikas Davis, who comes down and has it stripped by Shabazz. Feeds it ahead to Bibby, who adjusts, and it's goaltending against Gladney as Gladney showing he has the hops to get up at that time just a little late on the block. That's a tremendous job right there by Ron Shaw Shabazz being able to eyeball the defensive play get the strip without getting the foul and then finding the open teammate in the open floor Michael Bibby doing a tremendous job of getting out put the ball up off the glass then the goal 10 there gives him the deuce. 77 to 46 app state as jerikas davis going up and drawing the foul it was almost just barely getting up under the contact of tyrell johnson he'll shoot three free throws yeah that's a smart play right there by jerikas davis to understand that the defender is crowding him and go up little surprise that the referees don't go to the monitor kind of like they did in, in the first half to take a look to see was it contact above the neck you see Davis just understanding that Tyrell Johnson not really looking, trying to look for the screen. Just goes up and through him to draw the foul. It definitely a lot of contact to the face that time of Tyrell Johnson as Davis to the free throw line to shoot three and a 63% free throw shooter on the season. That's something that, that that move has become, you know, obviously popularized by James Harden in the NBA where you, you just kind of that little bit of a head fake and then you go up under the defender and try to just it's all you're looking for is three free throws yes yeah, intelligent basketball is being able to take advantage of the rules of the game when you feel someone who has a hand in your face has a hand on you or is a little bit too close you take advantage you get to the line especially when you're struggling offensively what better way than to go to the charity stripe and get a couple easy opportunities Tarikas Davis is really having a nice Second half now with 10 points in the second half. 10 of the 17 for Louisiana, Jerikas Davis does. He's doing a tremendous job, and he's doing it inside. He's doing it outside. He's doing it at the free throw line. Just continues to try to keep this team in a position where they can make a run here late. Isaac Johnson has it back to the basket. Feeds Forrest, and open three is just off the mark, and the rebound by Wesley. Here's Davis, heat check from distance. And that's Bennett Hawley who pulls down the rebound. App State with a three on two. Shabazz pushing the pace, gives it to Forrest who goes up and he got an offensive foul. It's a tremendous job right there on the defensive end by Trajan Wesley, knowing that the contact is coming, anticipating the pass to the wing and then moving his feet and especially staying outside of the restricted area. You should take a look right there. That's just a heady basketball play by Mr. Wesley. It was. He made sure he was said, he, like you mentioned, got out in front of that restricted area, which is easier said than done. Your top of the key for La Tech. Here's Wesley, the pull up three, and Johnson gobbles up the rebound. It's having him a tremendous night. The double-double for the Sun Belt's leader in rebounds going against the number two man in rebounds. And Mr. Gant for the the Cajuns, Tyrell Johnson has just been coming up big on the glass for the Mountaineers all night long. Shabazz with a short jumper. It's no good. And 14 rebounds already for Isaac Johnson in this one. Here's Wesley looking to attack. 
App State has outscored Louisiana 26 to 18 here in this second half. And if you're Louisiana, this is what you have to do. You can't look at the score. What you have to do is just be aggressive, try to get to the line with the clock stop. You can chip into this lead, extend this game a little bit, and just take it one possession at a time. Do the Mountaineers. It's the exact opposite. You come down, you continue to play your game. You speed it up if you want to. You slow it down in certain cases. Make sure you work the ball around the horn, get some quality offensive possessions, and be able to, to extend this lead. Is Hunter Seacat checking back into the game. Seacat with 8.7 rebounds, and he might not be leading leading score in this game, but he has had a massive impact in this one as you have another jumper by Davis, Jerikas Davis. Davis. Uh, he just continues to put in work here in the second half, single-handedly trying to bring the Cajuns back in this. App State is not as... The defense has kind of stepped back a little bit, not quite as aggressive, trying to force turnovers. Of course, when you have that 26-point lead, is Seacat the nice move inside? We've been talking about it all night. It's just the size advantage for the Mountaineers. Cage is not able to compete in that area. Wesley almost lost it, but scrambling to get it back, and then pulling it out is Isaac Johnson, who feeds Forrest. Forrest, a little shake and bake, and he is hammered inside by Gladney and... Wesley almost lost it, but scrambling to get it back, and then pulling it out is Isaac Johnson, who feeds Forrest. Forrest, a little shake and bake, and he is hammered inside by Gladney, and Forrest is down. And I can almost guarantee the officials are going to be taking a look at this play. Because Malice intent there it just was a certainly main play just, where, when just the bodies happens. collided sometimes. So in addition to the flagrant one foul call that we already had on Gladney, then there's a technical foul on Jim Fox for being too far on the floor and talking to players on the opposing team. So now you get Louisiana at the, at the line with the chance to score a couple easy points, but the tough night continues for Jakeen and Gant as he misses both. Now Forrest to the line to shoot the flagrants. Yeah, you mentioned that with Gant. He has 13 points, so it's it's not like he isn't scoring at all, but it doesn't seem like he's had that big impact that you expected coming into this game. And it's tough to have that when you're down. It's tough to, to go into your big man and work through the progression of your offense when you've been playing on your heels the entire game. That's a, a position that the Cajuns don't want to be in, that uncomfortable point of we can't run our offense, we can't do what we want to do. And you've seen it result in them being down big here in the second half. Isaiah Johnson finds Seacat. Now here's Bibby who comes off the screen. Zap State just patiently working the ball around Forrest. Feeds it inside to Johnson. Now they whip it around again. Here's Shabazz off the of screen. Going to attack with the left. Gets inside and missed an easy one. Miller the rebound. It's a nice offensive possession, though. You work the, the ball around, work the game clock down, and get a quality look at the basket. Justin Miller able to convert. Miller just continues to be a load in the painted area. So tough to deal with down there. And Shabazz works with it. Just amazing that the energy that App State came out with and how motivated they were just from the start of the tip. I mean, from the very beginning of this game, they got off to a, I believe it was a 17-0 lead in this game as Seacat converts with the left. And they just continue to exploit that size advantage on the inside. It's just as easy as Hunter Seacat catching the ball, taking his time, turning around, and then elevating. No hand in his face to deter the shot. Here's P.J. Hardy. An off-balance three, always a tough shot. And again, like, like we said, it, as Forrest was not ready for that pass, and Wesley the steal. Wesley looking to attack against Bibby, and Bibby is called for the block. And that'll bring us to immediate timeout. App State still with a 41. Tremendous effort on the defensive end for the Mountaineers, holding this very potent Raging Cages offense to just 54 points so far in this one and the catalyst has been Tyrell Johnson he's got 18 points on a very efficient six of eight shooting from the floor he has led this team all night long 
Trajan Wesley hitting the first and the second as well. Five App State players in double figures. App State has also forced 19 turnovers. They have a 23 to 4 uh, point advantage in points off of turnovers. So now Louisiana looking to force some turnovers of their own. Trying to extend this defense. Take the Mountaineers out of their game. Maybe force a turnover, get some easy buckets. Got to find some way to start getting back in this game rather quickly because the clock is not on your side. Well, Sean Williams swings to Isaac Johnson looking for Hunter Seacat again. And Seacat has the shot blocked from behind by Gant. Just got a piece of it, but it affected the shot. Boy, it's just so tough to get an easy basket in the paint area with Gant around. Now Gant and Justin Miller both going up for a rebound, and Miller goes down, and he looks to be in some pain. He may have been hit by friends. Uh, Jakeena Gant there asking the referee, was the foul on me? I know I, I brought down my own player. A <laughs> little bit of humor there from Gant as Miller to the free throw line. Both teams over the limit now, so both teams will be in at least a one-and-one one bonus now. As Miller not able to convert, but Gant coming down the lane and throwing down the hammer. How about Jakeenan Gant, someone who refuses to give up in this game? Nobody boxes him out. He comes over the top with the slam. And that was nasty. Gant, if you look at the replay here. Nobody gets a body on Gant, and he just does a tremendous job of coming over the top. Excuse me, Mr. Seacat. I've got business to attend to. That's right. Gant, that, that was a monster jam. Seacat now at the free throw line. Those he are the type of plays we're accustomed to seeing from Jakeen and Gant. He's been giving the Cajuns that all season long. Coming into this one, averaging a touch under 30 points per game in the conference season, he has just been tremendous. Yeah, and earlier this season had a 45-point game. That's not something you see that often in college basketball, those 40-plus those point performances. And that's why he's drawing so many eyes at the professional level. Teams understand that he brings so much to the table. He can really help a franchise in the association. He absolutely could. Absolutely could. Also, Ron Shad Shabazz, uh, Bob Marlin highlighted him coming into this game as one of the handful, one of the very few handful of pro spot, uh, pro prospects in this conference. Uh, you, what you, what could Ron Shad Shabazz potentially bring to the table in the pros as well? It's absolutely the same things that the Keenan Gant does. He has that versatility to be able to bring the ball up the floor. He can do it on the inside. He can do it in the outside. He defends well. He could be an asset as well, but what he has to do is just continue to develop, continue to get better, and get his teammates involved from that point guard position. Absolutely. Ron Shad Shabazz, again, like you mentioned, he's got decent size but can bring the ball to the floor at 6'5", as App State will have the ball. And you do have a player down. I believe that is Isaac Johnson. But he gets right up. He's got quite a few players who have had to – be helped up in this game, but thankfully no one has been seriously hurt. Hard fought basketball game in this one. Both teams understanding the severity of this game. The Rage Cage is trying to stay at the top of the conference, and then the Mountaineers fighting for their conference lives each and every game. As you see, the nice entry pass to O'Shawn Williams just getting lost in the shuffle and the Louisiana defense. But each game very precious for the Mountaineers moving forward. And again, Give credit to Jim Fox for getting his bunch ready. Now here's the rebound by Forrest after the three-point attempt there from Mason Oquan. Nap State with under six minutes to go. They still lead by 27. Here's Forrest, head fake. Nice little show there. Gives it to Bennett Holly who knocks it down. Bennett Holly, just call him the enemy at the gates. He's a sniper, cannot leave him open. Now Wesley is short and forced a physical rebound there. Going long, looking that time for Delph. Now here's a three by Oquan and nothing but the bottom of the net. That's what he does. He comes in specifically to shoot the basketball, does his job there. O'Shawn Williams scanning the floor. 
He got a couple of substitutions getting set to check into the game. Joseph Battle. And then you'll also have Brecky Gillison getting set to check in for App State as Tyrell Johnson across the lane with a sweeping hook shot. Just continues to impress. That's 20 big points for Tyrell Johnson. And this one, you have got to give a lot of credit to Jim Fox. When you've got a team that starts the way they did in the conference, you stand a chance to, to see that team maybe give up, come out, then play as well the rest of the season. But the credit goes to the head coach for getting his team together, getting them on the same page, bringing back that focus, that intensity, and continue to let them fight hard. It's Tyrell Johnson. He could see the promised land when he turned the corner there. <laughs> <laughs> now Trajan Wesley swing it around. Here's Hayes working with it. Takes it down the lane. He got away with a couple extra steps there, but... All was lost as he puts it in, and it'll count for Louisiana. So Sean Williams brings it up. Not a violation if they don't call it. Does a great job of getting into the painted area and doing what he's supposed to do when the whistle doesn't come, finishing. Here's a three top of the key. Forrest, a little strong, and the rebound to Gant. Gant overthrows. Behind the arc, defensively, he's been stifling. He has been the piece to make this train roll and for the Mountaineers. You saw Justin Forrest, him and, and Ron Chachubaz kind of smiling a little bit, laughing a little bit. They have every reason to. This has to be energizing to come in and play this well against a Louisiana team that was picked to finish second in this conference. And not only that, but the last time these two teams played, Louisiana big time winning 33 points and you could see the focus and intensity on a Mountaineers team who wanted to come out and get their very first win against the Cajuns tonight. Xavier and Delph hits the first free throw. Yeah, and 8 and 0. Oh, Louisiana or App State is 0 oh and 8 against Louisiana all time in the series. The teams have played 6 times since App State joined the Sun Belt. They've all they've, it's been an average of a 19 point win for Louisiana. So talk about uh, just kind of taking out the frustration in a huge win. And it may have been a perfect storm. You got a Louisiana team that's coming in on a two-game winning streak. Got an App State team who doesn't have the best record in the conference. App State never lost or never has been victorious against Louisiana. Maybe Louisiana took this App State team a little bit lightly. Was a big mistake if they did because the Mountaineers came out on fire and never let up. And again, you've said this a couple times, but I really do agree with you that, that Jim Fox, you know, the way that he's prepared his team again, because one and six and you can be feeling down in yourself, say, hey, people don't respect us. People look at our record. They see that we're last. But that is not the way that App State showed tonight. Absolutely not. And Jim Fox, give him credit. Take him out to Zaxby's after this. Let him get an extra <laughs> Zax sauce. He deserves it after getting his team ready to come out and perform, not only offensively, because we've seen it night in and night out from this Mountaineer team, but on the defensive side of the basketball, holding a team this prolific on the offensive end to just 66 points at this point in the ball game is just spectacular. As Brecky Gillison takes it inside and lays it in the freshman forward from Reykjavik, Iceland. Gilferson not known for his moves to the basket, a sharp shooter, but shows off the skills there, putting it on the floor, getting to the hoop. Now Christian Lafayette, who's only played in six games this season for Louisiana, is true with the jump hook there. Lafayette doing a tremendous job right there of getting the, the rebound and going up and in strong. Now Lafayette with the rebound and back the other way come the Ragin' Cajuns who will, with this loss, drop to 4-4 four and four, while App State will move to 2-6. and six. And App State obviously will have a chance to continue the momentum as they'll be back in this building Saturday at 2 p.m. against Louisiana Monroe. And that's a, a, another game that the Mountaineers, just like this one, will be taking with all sincerity. Every game is a big game in the Sun Belt Conference from this point forward. If they want to, to get that higher positioning, in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament, they're going to come have to come out with a purpose each and every game. Absolutely. And this was an App State team that started the year undefeated at home. They won their first five at home to start 5-0. and oh, And then they dropped that two-game homestand, their first one here in Sun Belt play, had that crushing overtime loss to Texas State. 
and lost by 10 to UT Arlington. But again, this is a team that has showed they're so good at home and obviously getting the road win, a team that could absolutely string together some wins. And now it's a team that's getting back to basics. It's a team that understands who they are, are getting more comfortable with each other, and playing their best basketball. As Hayes goes down the lane, draws contact, and that's Battle who picks up the foul, and Hayes converts, and now we'll look for the three-point play. That's a tremendous job by Hayes, just getting to the cup, putting the pressure on the defender to go right into his chest, and then the strength to finish through the contact for a chance at three the hard way. And Hayes puts it in. After this, Louisiana will be headed to Coastal Carolina as you have an inside take. And that's Nick Huff, who is fouled. He will head to the free throw line. Nick Huff gets into the ball game, making the most of his opportunity, going right to the basket, taking the contact. Now chance at the charity strike. You also have Jake Wilson along with Joseph Battle, Delph, and then Gillison in the game right now for App State is now checking into the game Kevin Curley, the senior. Kevin Curley, a fan favorite around Boone, so involved here at App State, a member of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Does a tremendous job there. So beloved on his team. Gets his chance to shine. Gillison! A marksman hits from downtown. Gilferson, that's what he's known for, stepping behind that and knocking down the three-point basket. He showed you the inside game already already tonight. Excuse me. This is a tremendous basketball player. Now here's the deep look from Oquan, Mason Oquan, and that is no good. And getting set to check in for App State will be Trev Ford. Now here's a three by Curley. Yes, sir. About Kevin Curley. The crowd goes bananas. Easily the most favorite and beloved player on this team. Big time shot for him and big time opportunity that he's taking, being taken advantage of right now. A classy move there. Bob Marlin taking a timeout just so that App State could get Trev Ford into the game. Just said to keep it rolling. Just want to get Trev Ford into the game. Absolutely. Class act. And App State hitting the century mark. 101 as Trajan Wesley misses in the emphatic rebound there by Joseph Battle. Now here's Trev Ford. The baseline jumper is just short. Now going to get the foul call there on Nick Huff. That was a good moment there. Kevin Curley knocking down the three. And as you said, fan favorite and the crowd showed their appreciation. And you love to see guys that put in the work day in and day out in the weight room and on this practice court each day, getting their team ready to play that don't usually get the big minutes, getting their opportunity and taking advantage of it. Absolutely. It's all about opportunity. When you have it, making the most of it. Because a lot of times those guys that don't get as many minutes, they're still talented. They just have not had the opportunity. Sometimes you'll have a freshman or sophomore turn into a team's leading score by the time they're a junior or senior. Absolutely. And when you got guys like Trey Ford and got guys like Kevin Curley who can really stroke it, Gilferson, can do the exact same thing. These are guys that can go to other programs, start and play, but continue to show that loyalty, that love for their university and work hard day in and day out. And now it's beautiful to see him be able to get on the court and share the spotlight. Gillison gives it up. Now Curley gives it to Ford. Ford puts it on the deck, takes it down the lane, finds Huff. Three from the corner is good. App Nick. State ring it up 104 for App State. Nick Huff, another gentleman who, again, puts in that work day in and day out. It's just great to see these young men get on the court and have that hard work pay off. Here's Lafayette able to convert off the window, and App State just going to let this one, salt this one away and let it be over. 